What's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing good today. Um, today we are joined by NFL defensive end Isaac Rochelle. How you doing, man? How you feeling today? Devin, I'm good. I feel good. I'm in uh like we were talking before this, I'm in Orange County. Uh we got another sunny day here, so I don't have much to complain about. I love it. I love it. See, I'm on, I'm on Colorado, like I mentioned to you too, and it's being not like being cold. It be, we don't we didn't really got spring yet. It don't feel like spring. So I'm a little jealous. You got that beautiful weather right now. Colorado's all over the place. I mean, it's like you get the most days of sunshine in Denver and Colorado Springs, those areas, but mm -hmm. like it still doesn't get warm for a while. A hundred percent, exactly. So, but look, that's a whole whole another conversation for a whole another day. <laughs> but um, exactly. I, I wanted to jump in. I actually want to jump into kind of like the social side of things because you know one thing about um you and your following you know you have a, a really big following you have over 130k followers on ig uh, almost like over a million on on tiktok uh, you the, your social media is really doing numbers very solid very strong um i would love to know kind of like you know with these um you know recent advances we've been seeing and like ai vr technology and things like that and knowing how quickly social media changes things um, I would love to kind of pick your brain on just like how do you see social media being utilized in the next five years? I know it's kind of like a loaded question, but I would love to pick your brain about that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a tough question, but I think I think social media is almost going to take a step back. I think social media for a long time was like a series of like perfectly curated images and videos with like mm -hmm. high quality, like the higher the quality, the better the content. I think now it's going to be, when I say quality, I'm talking about like literally like picture quality and video mm -hmm. quality. I think now because social media is becoming so integrated into people's lives, the, the aspect of it that's not as curated, that's just like very natural. Like I'm on an iPhone. It's very normal. Um, I think that's going to become more popular and more and and like posts will become more frequent. You're kind of seeing on seeing it on TikTok, like people went from posting one picture on Instagram for a whole event that they're doing. Like I go on a trip and I'm going to do one picture. It's like now it's like eight videos that are chill and like a little bit more uh, lax. So I could see just that being the norm uh, moving forward. Totally. Most definitely. It's like that short form content, the attention span to being shorter, things like that. Like I, I could totally see that. And, you know, I mentioned earlier with, with, with your social presence, I would love to know too, in a way, do you kind of sometimes you could, when you have a follow on that, you can fall into the, to the, um, I guess you can say world of, you know, needing to post content in a certain way or needing to give off a certain lifestyle or like, kind of have a, a a audience or a niche demographic, I guess you could say, or, uh, as far as your content. Um, when, you're, when you're crafting content for your channel like this, do you do you ever kind of run into that thing with like, oh, my, my, I need to like parade and speak to my audience in a certain way? Or like, is it just the more the authenticity of like being myself, here it is, being creative with like the content, how you post it, quality, all those kind of things. How do you kind of approach that? Yeah. So I think I definitely think about it. Um but I don't overthink it. I think I've built my platform, especially on TikTok, on just like, hey, like this is what's happening. I'm going to be super real about it. I'm not going to overthink it. Uh, kind of what I was saying earlier with just like doesn't have to be perfectly curated. Uh, however, I am still in the NFL. I still am like responsible to, you know, paint a certain picture um, in that regard. So I'm definitely a little conscious about it. And I also post a lot of content that's like behind the scenes and like, here's what's actually going on in the NFL. And I have to be really sensitive to uh, the people I work with, coaches, the NFL in general. So sometimes I'm selective about what I say in that sense. But generally speaking, <clears throat> I've just built my platform on being just super, uh, like almost vulnerable in a sense and just being kind of authentic. I love that. I love that. That's the, that's the content. That's just like the piece that works the best is like when people get to know you for you, there is no show, there is no facade. This is like my life. This is what's going on and those kind of things. So I, I love that. Now, yeah. um, we're done. We, you know, that's this being community voices. We are donating to the charity of your choice as well. Um, I, I would love if you kind of speak to, you know, the, the mission of the charity of your choice and things like that and, and what, the, what they like, what they're fighting for in their mission and values. Yeah. So when I was thinking about this, 
<clears throat> and like what I'd like to donate to, obviously there's a bunch of different charities that exist to do a lot of really good work. For me, um, growing up in a household where school was super important, uh, both because it is important and because my mom was a school teacher, uh, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of emphasis on it. And that kind of shaped everything that I did moving forward. I went to Notre Dame uh, and I had offers from a lot of different schools, but Notre Dame was the one school where I felt like I could get a good degree and play a high level of football. But again, the degree uh, became kind of the driving force behind why I went there. So there were a lot of things that I did in my life just because I had such a strong foundation of school and elementary school. So now like we're here uh, and my mom's an elementary school teacher and a lot of elementary school teachers are fighting to do a lot of really cool things for students um, and create resources for them and, and get parent involvement and all these things. Um, and I recognize that. And at her school, Edinburgh Elementary School, they have a nonprofit arm that's fighting for these things. Um, really just to give students the resources to learn and be productive um, and do a lot of cool things moving forward, but also get involvement uh, from the parents. So they're trying to create more environments where parents and teachers and uh, principals, et cetera, can be together um, to work together to, to help the student and the child. I mean, it's like a super cheesy thing. It takes a village to raise a child, but it's definitely true. And right. that's what they're trying to do. So um I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the gist of it. But I'm super excited to get involved with them specifically for a number of different reasons. For sure. And I, and I love that. And I also want to take, make sure that I, I use this space and take this time to, you know, like salute your mom for what she's doing, being a teacher, being in the in, in the uh, in the school system. You know, I know that we yeah. always talk about how, like a lot of the times teachers that they, 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 they deserve so much more they deserve the world and i know it's like a hard fight for them to be able to do the things that they're doing impacting lives changing lives from little to you know when they're young adults so first off big big salute to your mom for the work that she does for sure yeah bro it's it's crazy because she's been a teacher for over 20 years and just the landscape has changed so much i mean so like you know paying oath to these teachers and kind of thinking about everything they've done is so it's so important because, bro, it's a changing landscape. You know, even students from 2019 to 2021, post COVID, when you had a lot of virtual things and you had a lot of, a lot of changes socially for these these young children, like it's challenging on teachers. Um, and so that's why the resource piece is so important. Um, it's also why it's so important to get parents involved. Um, and yeah, so I appreciate that. I love that. I love, I love that. Now. Um, one thing I want to mention to you, we're talking about the organization, you also have your own organization. And I would love to know, you know, as somebody who we see things from the inside out sometimes, what was it like to start an or organization of your own? And how, how what are the challenges that you face? Or how, how is that kind of journey um, from your side of things looking on you know, the inside out? Yeah. So everything I've done uh, in my NFL career from like a nonprofit standpoint or a giving back standpoint, is all about, or it has been all about following, you know, whatever particular passion I have at the moment. I also think charity changes, right? There's a lot of different needs throughout the world. So I think as people who are donating our time and resources, we have to be uh, adaptive. So for me, when 2020 hit, really it was 2019 going into 2020, um, COVID started to happen. There was a lot of situations where, uh, you know, a lot of folks were struggling. So, and we had a lot of time when I say we, myself and the person I, I started it with. Right. Um, and so we were like, you know what? Like we have time, people need resources. Like wh what can we do? So we just started selling t-shirts um, to raise money for a number of different organizations. Um, and th the whole purpose behind it was just, what can we do right now? Right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we did that for a year through like t-shirt sales, through facilitating donations, like people get involved with us and donate through us. Uh, we were donating, I mean, we donated over like $80,000. It was crazy in a year. Like we did so much cool, cool stuff. Um, but now since then, I've kind of taken a step back from it because again, that model and that structure had everything to do with what I was passionate about at the time. Right. But for me, it was a really cool process, both building a business or a nonprofit business, 
Um, and then also coupling that with with giving back, it was a really, really, really cool experience. I love that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's such, I mean, it's really what the platform is about, but it, it does so much and it means so much to be able to give back, especially during those times. That was a crazy time where we needed so many things that we didn't even know we crazy. needed to know what was going on. So just to be able to 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 create those kind of meaningful moments and things to have that impact is 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 I mean once again salute to that that's that's yeah. big yeah and people didn't know what to do right like people were right. just kind of like stuck and they were like dang like I see people struggling um, but everybody's stuck at home what are you supposed to do so that's why we were like let's just start selling t-shirts and then people can buy the t-shirts and we'll donate everything to whatever we want to donate it to. Um, and it was a really cool concept. Um, but it, again, it, it fit really well within the COVID, like that world. Right. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was crazy, bro. People were struggling. And then you had the racial injustices that were happening. You had all these things. Like, it's like 2020 was crazy. So we wanted to do everything we could do to help. Most definitely. And, you know, and, and doing that, because I, I believe it, it was, it, um, was it called Local Human? Was that was the, the name, right? Correct. Correct? Correct. So like you know in that moment too like we're also you know all the work that you're doing and the things that you know strategizing to have this impact and give back as much as you can in this moment and and so much so that you were um nominated for Walter Payton of the Year uh nominee um what what did it mean to be nominated for that to just see how far your work had gone or how how much your work had been noticed yeah yeah absolutely it was super cool that uh the team had recognized it and I feel like I was doing so much work. Like I was legit, it was legit a job, um, <laughs> which was crazy, but uh, we were just doing a lot and it was really cool. That's such an honor to be, to be nominated that and to look back at my career and to say that that's something that I was nominated for because it's a really prestigious award. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's, it, it kind of is what it is in the sense that it's like, it's, it was an unbelievable honor, right? Like it mm -hmm. was super super enjoyable. And for my family, again, my mom's a teacher. So in her mind, she's like, oh, I love that he's in the NFL, but it's more important to me that he's doing things in the community. So even for my family, uh, it was a, it was an honor. 